So welcome to term two for the students who are studying from home. In today's lesson we're going to begin our study of fractions. So you're first going to be watching this video, then if you have a printer you might now just want to open up this attached PDF and print off the sheet and because we're going to be using that in a little activity later on in the lesson and then we'll end the lesson by looking at a few education perfect modules. So basically fractions are parts of a whole number. So here's an example of an object and we can see that it has three parts and one part is shaded and two parts are not shaded. So here they've made a statement that one out of the three total parts is shaded or one third of that shape is shaded. So just some terminology rather than saying top number and bottom number let's get used to calling top number the numerator and the bottom number the denominator. So for the fraction one half the numerator is one and the denominator is two. You might just want to make a note of that in your exercise books now. So maybe just start a new page in your exercise books. You can label it fractions and you can write out this example fraction and label the numerator and denominator. So the denominator always tells us how many total parts there are and the numerator tells us how many of those are selected. Or like in our first example, we had a shape with three parts and because one of them was shaded, we had the numerator of one and the denominator told us how many total parts there were and there were three. So if you eat one half of a pizza, the denominator tells you that there was two segments and you ate one of them. So this is basically what I've just explained, that the denominator represents how many parts a whole is split into. So you can see here that there have it looks kind of like a pizza and there's eight parts in total. So if I was to eat four of them, then you would say that four eighths of the pizza was eaten. Uh, so there's a few practice questions that you will have a go at later in the lesson. Now we have three different ways that we, or three different types of fractions. A proper fraction is where the numerator is smaller than the denominator. So 1 over 12 is, is an example of a proper fraction. And a proper fraction's value is always less than 1. The second type of fraction that we can have is an improper fraction. And an improper fraction is where the numerator is larger than the denominator. And these types of fractions represent a value which is always greater than a whole. So 10 eighths is greater than a whole. 8 eighths would be a whole, and then we have two extra parts. So this is essentially saying one whole, and then we have two eighths. And the third type of fraction that we have is a mixed number. So a mixed number is a combination of a whole number and a fraction, and these will also always be greater than one. So they've given an example of a mixed number of one and one sixth. So you can see, here's our one whole, and then one sixth represents one part of six of this other shape. So here's a nice summary of what we've just discussed. I'd like you to pause the video here and copy this these three statements here about a proper fraction, an improper fraction, and a mixed number, and you can put an example of each of those. Now, the next thing we're going to look at is fraction walls. So, here we have a couple lambs, and it seems as though Gerard has broken the fraction wall. So, let's have a look at what a fraction wall actually is. So, when we're considering a fraction wall, you always we well, can start off by considering one piece at the top. So we're going to start off with this one piece at the top. Now we're going to have a row beneath this. Now what we're going to do, we're going to split that hole into two equal parts. So you can see this one hole 
they've drawn another row and it's been equal, split into two equal parts. So there's one half of that row and there's the other half of that row. Then in the third row, we've split it up into thirds. So there is three equal parts, but you can see the total length is the same as that initial hole. In our fourth row, we've split it up into four equal parts. That same total length has been split up into four equal parts and so on. So then the fifth row is split up into five equal parts, the sixth row is equal to six equal parts and so on. So why is this useful? Because we can use this to help us see some equivalent fractions. So that there isn't too useful, but you can see here they've drawn a line through one quarter. So there was the four equal parts and they've drawn a line from the top all the way down to the bottom. And you can see that this one quarter, that area or that length is equal to two eighths. So basically what this fraction wall is used useful for telling us is that one quarter is equal to two eighths. And we can go through and we can see a range of situations where we have some what we call equivalent fractions. So if we have a look at this animation, that's one ninth, there's no equivalent fraction, there's no equivalent fraction to one eighth or one seventh or one sixth. But when we get to one fifth, we can see it's equal to two tenths. We can see one quarter is equal to two eighths. We can see one third is equal to two sixths, which was equal to three ninths, and so on. So this animation is quite useful to show us some uh, equivalent fractions, and we'll, we'll look at we'll look more into equivalent equivalent fractions in coming lessons. So. That's where I'm going to leave the video today. I'd like you to print out this sheet which is attached to sector and I would like you to have a go at drawing these fractions on each of the circles. Remember the denominator tells us how many total parts you should have and then the numerator will tell you how many parts you should shade. So for example one half, you should cut that a circle into two equal parts and shade in one of them. Then with one quarter, you'll cut the circle into four equal parts and you'll shade one of them and so on. Once you've finished doing that, you can then move on to the attached Education Perfect modules. Now I've gone through all of the information in those modules, but I'd just like you to read over them again and complete the activities listed. Alright, good luck and happy studying.